Now that we have understand the principle of displacement, we can take a look at the actual height fields within Houdini. So here in the object context, let's create a geometry node. Let's dive in. And the first thing you will need to do to create a height field is look for the actual height field node. So you can press tab and then press HF. So this is a very nice shortcut. Every time you type H and then F on the tab menu, you will have a list of all the height field nodes. So the one at the very top is a height field. So let's click on this one and we will generate a default height field that's actually 1000 by 1000 meters. Now, the most important thing that we need to understand about height fields is that they're actually made of 2D volumes. If you hover your mouse over the height field node and then click on the eye icon to see the information, you will notice that we have two volumes. One is called height and one is called mask. And it's very important to know the difference between these two volumes and to understand how can these volumes be manipulated. So first of all, let's take a look at our height field node. Let me create some more space here. And the first thing you will want to check is the resolution of this volume. So by default, we'll have a division mode set to by size. And in this case, every single voxel of this volume measures two meters or in this case, two squared meters. We can also change the division mode to by axis. And this is similar to what we did with the geometry. We can add 500 volumes on each size. Think of them as rows and columns. And now we have a volume with the same exact resolution of the geometry that we used in the first exercise. Now, one of the biggest advantage of height fields within Houdini is that they're usually lighter to work with than actual geometry. So volumes are, are handled very fast and we can usually go with much higher resolutions. For example, let's try increasing the resolution to 2000 and it will still be very manageable. Now, once you have your base height field, there's usually two ways we can go about modeling this terrain. First of all, using images as a base, or we can also synthesize this terrain with a series of height field tools. Or actually, you can even do a combination, but in general, it's either start with an image or create the terrain using noises or other tools. So let me add a height field noise. This will probably be the note that you will most use when you're creating your terrains. So let's connect this node just below our height field. And by default, we'll have a very nice noise pattern, a bit similar to what we did, but with much more detail. So in this case, we are creating this very nice terrain completely from scratch with only one node. But before we go into deep into the height field noise and some other very nice and powerful tools, let me show you a bit of the basis of how these height and mask volumes work. So let's go back to our image. And usually I like to understand this in 2D because it's easier. First of all, it's easier to view. And in second place, most of us have already done a bit of compositing or probably image editing before. So let me jump into the composite view. And here I have a few notes that I created. So I just created a text that says height. I added a blur. And then we have just a null to be able to reference this image. And then with the VOPCOP2 generator that we already saw, I created this pattern. It's a wavy pattern. Again, I blurred it. And again, I added a null. So what I'm doing here is I'm compositing the height text on top of the wavy pattern. So this is similar to what you would do in Photoshop, Nuke or something similar to composite two different layers to generate an image. Now we could use a mask to avoid compositing parts of the text in this case. So we can connect these other texts that I have on the right side. So it's a black and white text that says mask. 
Again, I'm blurring it, connecting it to a null, and I'm just inverting the colors here. So I'm going to use this as a mask to avoid parts of the text to be composited over the wavy pattern. So again, this is a very common technique in compositing. So let's invert the mask. So notice how only the white parts of the mask are permitting the text to be composited here. And this is very similar to how the height and mask volumes work in height fields. So think of the height in terms of the color and you could think of the mask volume of something that is avoiding the points to be pushed. So let's see that in action. So let's go back to my object context into my geometry node. And now instead of using this height field noise, I will lay down a height field file. And this will let me load in an image into the height field. So again, by default, it will generate, in this case, it's a butterfly. And notice something very important. It will try to connect this to the mask volume. And this is why we're seeing this red tint here. And this is nice because just by looking at this tint, you know what can be acted upon off with other nodes. So let's change the layer name to height. You can also select it from the list here. That way we won't do any typos. And let's fetch the images that we have in our COP network. So let's go into the image context. And as we did before, we could copy this null. Or actually, let's use a pattern first. So I'll copy this node back to my object. Under source, I'm going to change this to cop. And I can paste this null into my height field file. Now, unlike with the butterfly, we're not seeing any red tint or any apparent displacement. But it's happening the same thing that happened with the geometry. These values from the image range from 1 to 0, so they're very low. So if we scroll down here into the parameters, we will see a height scale. So let's try increasing this height scale to 200. And now we will start to see these wavy patterns emerge on the geometry. So let's bring this down a bit. Let's go with 20 meters. And now we're looking at that image applied to my height field or to the displacement in this case. Now let's try creating another height field file. So I can just press Alt and click and drag this node. And here let's load the second image, which is the height image. So you can click on the operator chooser button and just navigate to where we had those images. In this case, it would be the image context and it would be the out height. So now on the left side, we have the height text. Remember, this was black and white. On the right side, we have our pattern and we can mix these two together with a special height field node called height field layer. This height field layer node is similar to a merge node in a compositing program. So I can take one layer and mix it with a second layer, either by adding, multiplying, or subtracting this information. In this case, I'll click on Add to have the combination of both. Now, as we did in our compositing environment, we can use a mask to determine how these two images are mixed. So in this case, let's copy yet another height field file. So press Alt, click and drag to create a new node. In this case, we will create a mask, not a height volume. So type mask, or again, you can select this from the list. And remember, we increased the high scale to 20. This is very important when you're using masks, you usually want the height scale to be one. 
okay so now let's load our text pattern so click here on the operator chooser and this time select the mask and notice we have now our red tint showing where the mask is having effect and now if we connect this volume into the third input of the height field layer this will serve as a mask when we're trying to combine these two layers. And again, as we did in our 2D environment, we could invert this mask to invert where the layer mix is having effect. Okay, so now that we've understand how the height and mask volumes work, let's start generating our terrains.